In this video, I will be introducing you to network optimization and IBM's network optimization modeling tool, LogicNet Plus XE. These types of tools are commonly used to help companies decide the optimal number and location of storage and or production facilities to be utilized across their supply chain. In recent years, industry leading companies have also found ways to utilize these base model studies for ongoing network evaluation. This enables them to embed optimization into more ongoing supply chain planning, which has been shown to provide significant savings. These ongoing studies may include territory assignment decisions, determining which plants should make which products and when, contingency planning, budgeting, supporting their SNOP process, as well as just reacting to frequent environmental changes such as increases in fuel surcharges or exchange rate fluctuations. Now let's look at what makes up a traditional network optimization model. We will start by viewing a plot of the customers. This map depicts all customer locations for a given network sized by the relative amount of demand associated with that geographic location. The larger the circle, the more the demand. Raw demand information sits in an easy to use demand form. Here you can see the exact amount of product demanded by every customer, product, time period combination that exists within the network. All network models also need to define a source of product. In this case, our plants are depicted by blue rectangles with flags on top. Models may also help you decide where these product sources should be located and how many you should have. However, for this example, we are assuming that these are fixed and production plans have already been determined. Now you have seen where products start in this supply chain and the customer locations where all this product needs to end up. Let's now look at what we are trying to optimize within this specific model, which is the storage space or warehouses represented here by the red triangles. These triangles represent all current and potential additional warehouse locations this model is selecting from. Not only do we want to know how many warehouses we will need, but the optimal locations and which customers each should service in a minimal cost network. On top of all those combinations, you may also need to make decisions regarding the optimal source of the product, hub versus spoke designations, customer assignments, and more. For each warehouse seen here, there are relative fixed and variable costs associated with each. The model also incorporates transportation costs and evaluates these potential savings. Until this point, we have only seen the geographic view of this model. Let's now take a look at the visualization that depicts how product is allowed to flow or the paths that have been defined for the solver to optimally select from. This visualization accessed through our transportation lanes form shows what the model is set to evaluate. Production costs incurred at manufacturing plants, transportation costs for all plant to warehouse lanes, the cost to store product at our warehouses, as well as the final transport cost to deliver to all customers. In some models, we will want to separate our sites into subgroupings as seen here for our customers. This is in order to apply more specific constraints or options for delivery. You have now been fully introduced to the model. Before we take a look at our optimal solution though, let's take a look at this company's current setup, or what we call their baseline model. This company's existing network included only two sites for both production and distribution purposes located in Des Moines, Iowa and Dover, Delaware. Obvious by the transportation lane lines on this solution map, the current structure required them to ship a lot of long haul shipments in low quantities, which results in very costly, less than truckload transportation outbound to customers. If we quickly review 
the high level summary report by clicking on the solution ribbon and then the summary report button. This gives us a good total cost overview broken out into some high level categories. You can quickly see the very high transportation costs, which is made up mostly of that costly outbound transportation cost we mentioned just a second ago. Now let's move on to running some different optimization scenarios. As we mentioned before, this company's goal was to determine the best number, location, and size of warehouses to add to their network. The first scenarios run will be asking the solver to select the best three to four DCs or warehouses. We also want to take into account that they recently decided to add a plant location in Juarez, Mexico. Setting up this scenario is made easy by utilizing the group constraints forms within the data constraints menu. Here, we quickly set the model to pick a min of three and a max of four warehouses. Then, we simply need to kick off a run using the run button within the optimize ribbon, which begins the solver and we start to see the processing take place. At the completion of the solver, you are ensured that the scenario was run successfully and all reports have been generated and are ready to be viewed. As we close out the solver screen, you'll notice that the optimal solution is automatically displayed on the map. We can click on any of the new locations, which produces a box showing the name and average inventory level, as well as provides access to relative input and output forms in the model. By adding warehouse locations in Sacramento, California and El Paso, Texas, the model is positioning the company closer to its West Coast demand. Now let's look at this solution compared to the baseline solution previously run. The solution comparisons report allows us to view any number of scenarios side by side. Here, you can quickly see the overall total cost went down by approximately $5 million. We can also compare in other cost subcategories, such as the increase in plant to warehouse shipping due to additional warehouse that must receive product, we can actually see that most savings has come from the decrease in warehouse to customer shipping costs now that they are much closer to the customers on average. Finally, you can see the increase in warehouse fixed costs as a result of more warehouses in our network as well. It's all of these cost category differences combined that finds the $5 million savings between the baseline and the addition of two warehouse locations to the network. Now that we have allowed the application to generate an optimal solution, there is a temptation to take these results and immediately begin to think about implementation. The real power behind these tools, however, is the efficient ability to run and compare multiple solutions to really test the sensitivity these results may have to fluctuation in input variables. The easy to use scenario manager allows us to create copies of scenarios and set up all our additional what if versions we would like to run. Numerous what if scenarios may be run at the same time utilizing the batch run capabilities which take advantage of multiple processors available on your machine. Based on our original Optimal 4 warehouse solution, we now want to see how location selection and overall costs might change if we limit overall warehouses to just three or increase this to force the use of five. Aside from running scenario analysis around number of locations selected, it is common practice to also test out how optimal solutions will change as a result of different iterations of demand forecasts or which modes of transportation will be utilized in which combinations. 
different variations of carrier fuel surcharges, or potential changes to networks based on new markets they may win business in. In general, companies find the ability to make the solution tests allows them to be more confident in their savings that they may expect. In just a minute, we will also introduce you to multi-objective optimization for scenarios, which will provide companies with even deeper insight into their solutions and key drivers. But first, let's take a second to compare the output for the what-if scenarios we have just created. In addition to the 100 plus standard reports available from directly within LogicNet Plus XE, users have the ability to review and compare scenario output via the built-in configurable reporting capabilities from Tableau. The scenario summary dashboard, shown here, was created to show a comparison between any number of user-selected scenarios. In our summary bar chart, in the upper right-hand corner of our dashboard, we can easily view how transportation costs decrease while warehouse costs increase across scenarios. It is also easy to see that the best for warehouse solution was our optimal, or the solution with the least overall cost. This dashboard also shows us the ability to create similar combinations of the output data across scenarios in table or geographical map formats as well. Let's now take a quick look at some of the other user-friendly output reports produced by LNP XE. Summary reports are created for each broad network model category. Here is an example of the summary report for the optimal warehouses selected and their costs and related capacities. Another user favorite is our customer service report that displays customized distance bands and the amount of demand serviced within each. Finally, the total landed cost report options are able to display any level of detail in regards to the per product, per customer specific costs as products make their way from origin to final destination in the optimal network. This report is also provided visually for a faster and more intuitive look at the flow and cost of products through the supply chain. Now that we have been introduced to network design and the features and functionalities of IBM's LogicNet Plus XE that make these studies easy to create, optimize, and report on, let's talk about the latest and greatest in network optimization that is only found in this IBM solution. LogicNet Plus now allows users to create their own custom objectives to guide the solver. Users may then select to run their models to find solutions focusing on these specific cost and or constraint areas as opposed to just minimizing overall cost or maximizing overall profit. With the new multi-objective optimization capabilities in LogicNet Plus XE, we are now able to trade these custom objectives off against each other, which allows you to fully understand the effects these constraints have on each other, as well as the overall model. This can be seen here for a model which is set to trade off the number of plant locations utilized versus proximity to customer markets. This unique network modeling capability equips our users with a quick and powerful way to assess their key model drivers, as well as providing valuable intelligence into what might have been a blind guess at the best what-if scenarios to evaluate for your network. For instance, within this fully formed trade-off curve, we quickly see that we gain very little in the way of improvements to customer service after the 20th plant is added to the network. Therefore, our most valuable scenario analysis will be done within the 2 to 10 plant range, where each additional location makes a much larger impact on our overall customer service. This concludes our introduction to traditional network design and IBM's LogicNet Plus XE application. Please contact your company's IBM representative or visit IBM.com for more information.